Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Pascal Siedler. I'm an artist and currently working as a teaching assistant at the Master Fine Arts program of the Zurich University of the Arts. And before we get started, please note that this talk is being recorded and will be posted online after the event. By participating, you grant us permission to use your image, moving or still, and voice in the record. And again, for all the set HDK participants being here with us in the room, please keep your microphones and laptop sounds on mute. Otherwise, we will get the noisy feedback. And for everyone listening in, you're um, very welcome to place your questions in the chat and engage in the open discussion after the speaker's presentation and the discussion statement. Ika from Chaf and Maria from Pua Flux here um, are our chat moderators who will keep track of your questions and will help us to keep the ball moving throughout the open discussion. And Jonathan Ospina is our technical assistant. He's recording the talks and after post-production, we'll upload them on our ZHDK YouTube channel. And these two weeks, we are focusing on Jativangi Art Factory's Terracotta City project and related initiatives. The talk series is part of a seminar by the MA Fine Arts, Zurich University of the Arts, and is co-designed by Foa Flux, um, Jativangi Art Factory, together with Also Space and the Willem de Kooning Academy. So today I've got the great pleasure to introduce you to Ismail Munda, who will start now with the very first talk in the series. Um, Ismail lives and works with the Jativangi Art Factory, Short Chav, located in, in Java, in Chattivangi on Java, Indonesia. And he is currently studying in a master's program in development studies at Bandung Institute of Technology. He initiated together with Sunday Screen the annual Village Video Festival in Chattivangi. And since 2017, he has formed the Land Study Agency, VTK, which is a temporary institution that focuses on the study of land and cultural landscapes through artistic projects. And today's talk is titled To Be Continued or the End, Soil Strategy for Development. And having that said, I kindly pass on the word to Ismail. Thank you very much for being here and giving us your insights. So welcome Ismail and let's give him an applause. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> it's like a concert. <laughs> yeah, very glad and happy to. Oh, sorry. Uh, to uh, be part of this program and actually a bit nervous because I'm the one who start uh, sharing in this program. But <clears throat> yeah, again, thank you for every party who make this program happens everyone to join <clears throat> and hopefully we can discuss here in the relax and not have tension but uh, can talk a lot and yeah deep <clears throat> uh, yeah okay so maybe I can start to sharing my screen So everyone can see my screen now. We see it now together with the site uh, page. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah, I think <clears throat> uh, for this time, maybe I will uh, share about the, actually about the kind of introduction about the Jatiwangi and then the background of uh, Jatiwangi Art Factory, but <clears throat> hopefully can also sharpen into 
uh, we can discuss more about how we, we can stretching the artistic practice in the real life context and uh, our real life context of Jatiwangi now is in the middle of development. But then I think it's also happened everywhere, especially in the what's so called of uh, global south. But then I think we are until now we are always uh, in the mood of uh, development because we are always thinking something that the idea of progress progress <clears throat> so but yeah and then yeah this is Jatiwangi as as Pascal mentioned Jatiwangi is located in the West Java so Jatiwangi is a district and it's around 90 6,000 people live here and we have 16 village in Jatiwangi district. So in the picture that you saw, it's a lot of orange color, which is terracotta or roof tile. And in this picture, we can see a, a complex of roof tile factory. So Jatiwangi is uh, very well known in Indonesia as a roof tile pro producer and maybe in the biggest in the Southeast Asia. <clears throat> and now Jatiwangi, as, as, as I mentioned before, is in the middle of development. Like, this is the picture that uh, the ruin of the roof tile factory. And you can see in the middle appears some, some object which is like uh, some chimney from the another factory or modern factory. So roof tile now in the middle of declining and then try to transform into another uh, to another modern industry, which is projecting by the government as a development project. This is the what our situation now with like <clears throat> maybe for the next two years we have changed a lot actually now it's already changed a lot <clears throat> in this map you can see like uh, this is the west java like the north side of west java and you can see the triangle this is the what the national government and also the province government projecting about the north side of west java and then jatiwangi is included and there is a three main in big infrastructure we uh, already built. One is the the international airport, and then the uh, harbor in Cirebon, and then another harbor in more north of West Java in uh, Subang. <clears throat> so this this three angel is projecting as an industrial area and now at least uh, there is uh, several like I think 30 uh, factory already come to here to Jatiwangi uh, the biggest one is the a factory who produce the Nike shoes uh, and it can be have worker until uh, 15,000 and this is the situation in the middle of COVID like you see people still working but then like there is some gate with the uh, uh, sanitation uh, yes spray gas yeah this is the biggest one and this factory kind of replacing the the land that before it's using for rice field and then Several factory also really literally changing into new new factory like this because they have they bankrupt and then uh, and then sell to the investor from foreign from like from Taiwan from Korea uh, and then they build the the factory like this 
mostly like garment factory and textile factory. So yeah, <clears throat> like you saw, like the factory also kind of uh, sporadically built like in the middle of village, but yeah, people still uh, playing with that. Even they, or we, yeah, most of the people in Jatiwangi celebrating this situation because they see this as a opportunity of uh, in the context of improving the economy. But development actually historically is like already happened in Jatiwangi. So Jatiwangi is kind of the area who shared a lot by the development. And at least we can trace it from the colonial times when the, during the Dutch colony, like uh, 1970, uh, the Dutch made a new law and bring, that's the first time of uh, forced liberalization in Java and Jatiwa in, which uh, starting from the bring the investor to build a sugar factory in the whole uh, Java and, and there is one factory built in Jatiwangi. This is the picture that we get from the uh, colonial archive, which is in Jatiwangi, the land Jatiwangi, which is before is rice field. Yeah, like uh, I mentioned, nine, 1870, uh, uh, it's called like sugar law or land law. This is the, the helicopter image about the sugar factory in Jatiwangi. You can see very big. But then during that time also, uh, the first rooftop factory founded in 1905, uh, which is from, from my observation, I'm, I think it's kind of the reaction uh, against colonialism because at that time uh, the colonial government make a law that you can avoid the culture cell cell maybe you have been familiar with that it's like the policy that uh, uh, that makes the people so working for the the factory or for the colonial government but then you can yeah or force labor and then but you can avoid that with a pay, with a pay uh, for some money, and uh, yeah, and then from that, <clears throat> uh, starting 1905, the local industry, let's say, starting to appear and uh, spread into every village in Jatiwangi. The second wave of development, it's happened. <clears throat> during the new order era of Suharto, like after our second president. So at 70, the new order government made a policy about public housing and it's stimulating or, or increasing the demand of the, of the roof tile. And since that time, making roof tile for Jatiwangi is like making money. So we see, so the land that using for sugar factory now for planting the sugar can now also using for a roof tile factory. And then since that we see our resource as a commodity, like <clears throat> making roof tile is like making money. And since that, like 19, 80 during 1990 is like is the strength the strongest economy in Jatiwangi, like the golden era. A lot of yeah, and this is the our first international airport in Jakarta. The rooftop is from Jatiwangi, and maybe in the whole Indonesia, like the infrastructure project, which is uh, using rooftop mostly, it's from Jatiwangi. So in that golden era, uh, because you know a lot of the people making the roof tile factory and it's like new king, like everyone suddenly become the uh, new boss because they have a lot of demand. And then they have a very interesting hobby like 
because they have a lot of money, so they make a uh, hundred thousand dollar chicken fighting or make a gambling for uh, every village chief election and also or if they confuse to use the money they uh, yeah. married again and have a lot of wife and because the demand of the rooftop also uh, increasing this era is kind of the rooftop broker dynasty and also a lot of village fighting is kind of chaotic but then now the rooftop factory is going uh, decrease or declining so from at least 600 now it's uh, 90 uh, 150 maybe now like less like 100 uh, rooftop factory and yeah one years after the first rooftop factory founded 100 years after like uh, 2005 Jatiwangi Art Factory also founded it's like a new factory so Jatiwangi <clears throat> is appear in the midst of uh, development transformation in yeah. the when the economical structure Jatiwangi declining uh, start to uh, facing the new development so Jatiwangi uh, come up in the middle so that's why <clears throat> what Jatiwangi do actually it's kind of the surviving not <clears throat> um, yeah, kind of the experimenting the resilient model in this transformational situation uh, through a various artistic approach from something that's sentimental or romantic into until something that a uh, colossal that involving a lot of people to to create a collective agreement and yeah as we know like development about theoretical or ideolo ideological and strategic <clears throat> uh, the main actor is always state or international development agent and then the question where is the uh, role of the community as we know like the community usually kind of the uh, object that uh, always have or always in the in the tendency as something that should improve like like this development agent uh, always have a logic uh, under the will to improve so the community is something that uh, yeah something that inter intervening or intervene to, to improving imagine to improve Yes, I uh, tell before, like, so our soil, our land, actually in Indonesia, we have one word to, to summarize that call it, we call it Tana, Tana in, in, in Bahasa or in English, uh, or in, yeah, in Bahasa can mean soil, land, or clay, or ground, or area, yeah. So before we are in the kind of uh, colonial development and rebellization and then come up with the new order development and then also now we are facing the new modern industry or a global capitalism. So what Jatiwangi Art Factory is kind of uh, offering on, yeah, of like, uh, experimenting the surviving mood mode with the uh, what I call like material subjectivity and at least there is three dimension that maybe we can discuss here first is like limbering the industrial rhyme because <clears throat> as you know after the golden era of rural uh, industry people always yeah, people see the tanah or our resources as a commodity and uh, every day like uh, we are very used to to have the industrial uh, rhythm and another dimension is uh, through this material or through tanah 
uh, Jeff also started talking about how to negotiating the, the space and then stranging the cultural value. And Jeff actually start with the myth we, that we believe that soil is a dignity. So first we try to romanticize everything like regarding clay, soil, land, earth, and yeah, like limbering the industrial rhyme of the uh, rooftop industry. And yeah, this is what we do in the beginning, like <clears throat> rooftop that usually using for the uh, uh, roof, then we try to make that as an instrument and then make a song together with our neighborhood, make a concert in every village, like stranging again the relation as a community of Jatiwangi. Uh, yeah, romanticize how we live, how we living together. Because mostly in the village also, like uh, they have a family relation. So we try to uh, touch again that that sense as a family, and we invite a lot of our friends to come, mostly artists, uh, to make excitement together here in Jatiwangi. <clears throat> uh, at the first time, we invite like Arif, our founder, invite his friend, especially from the uh, abroad, because it can be also make an attention as we know like yes uh, in Indonesia mostly like the foreign people is only in Bali or in in the tourism area but then suddenly it comes to their village which is like very dry a lot of mosquito like there is there, there is no beautiful landscape here in Jatiwangi but then they come and then with the happiness atmosphere and then try to creating uh, excitement together. And we, and yeah, we choose the festival format at that time. We call it Jatiwangi Residency Festival because uh, the artists stay in Jatiwangi for like two weeks and then make uh, something together with uh, our neighborhood like Arif and his family starting uh, with uh, his close uh, relative or family, and then ten house uh, from his house. And, and then we are kind of contagious about this uh, excitement together because suddenly, like, we feel like we are connecting again with <clears throat> our neighborhood, and then to, with another village, which is before, like usually we are fighting each other. So this rest is this residence festival we held every two years and then the second one is 2008. And after that also we made the, another festival. Uh, uh, we, we call it Village Video Festival with the same format like inviting artists or video maker or to come and then make a, a video together. And yeah, at that time, I still remember like people are very exciting because usually they see uh, someone uh, strange. Yeah, they, they see in the television or in the film, but then now they can see their neighborhood or yeah, uh, in, in the television because at the time with this festival, we also made a community television. This festival is held every uh, years until uh, 2019, and yeah, and now we become more of reacting to a strange and the cultural of value, or <clears throat> yeah, like uh, this is the picture like when the when the new highway built in across our village like the uh, national development project with the new highway. And we took the soil from the highway and then make kind of the ritual and put the soil in our neighborhood house. It's kind of introducing the, the 
<clears throat> the new neighbor, the highway is like a new neighbor instead of kind of doing the confrontation. And yeah, we make also a new ritual to kind of make a connection again with uh, our local material tanah. It's held every three years. We call it Bakar Berjamaah, which it really means like uh, mass burning because in this ritual, we invite our neighborhood to make kind of instrument or ceramic object or terracotta object like a bowl or a glass. And then <clears throat> uh, we invite them to we choose one roof tile factory and then we invite them to bring their their object and then we firing together and praying that object uh, together like this is the praying ritualization before it's uh, fired we invite like a chief district the imam to lead the praying and also some uh, Muslim like, <clears throat> like group, some music group from the uh, mosque to sing before the praying starting. And we also made kind of roof tile testament, like make a specific roof tile and then put in the house, give to the someone that inspiring in every village. So if you come to Jatiwangi and see there is a house with this kind of roof tile, I think you can uh, knocking uh, the, uh, his house or her house because that's the one who inspiring our village. And yeah, this is another ritual. So <clears throat> we make kind of what, what what we call as supernatural farming, because in Jatiwangi we didn't have kind of the uh, strange local tradition, so for us it's kind of opportunity to creating new one. Like usually we people pray in the mosque, but then now we ask them to pray in the rice field. So the seed, this this is, this uh, farming is uh, or using the organic farming or natural farming, but then we add the power of praying to to make uh, yeah to make the land have a uh, dignity this is the ritual before the planting and the biggest momentum in the context of uh, stranging the cultural value for us is like uh, in 2018 we had kind of new tradition every three years. We do this since 2012, but then the last one, 2018, is like uh, the biggest one because 11,000 people bringing the Jatiwangi soil together. And it's, yeah, it's very interesting because it's only like uh, 15 minutes because only three songs. And sometimes the song, if you imagine as an orchestra, it's like, a, it's, this is the chaotic version of the orchestra because but then at that time we feel like we are connecting each other as a, a big family then kind of uh, yeah in this in this uh, transform transformation situation is like kind of energy for us <clears throat> and i still remember at that time is we had a big rain but then like arif said you want to go home or continue and like 11000 people from like kids, elementary school, uh, high school, police, gangster, uh, mother house, village governance, etc. like say like, no, we won't continue. So like they con we continue uh, this, uh, for me, it's kind of a ritual. And yeah, another dimension also is regarding uh, how we negotiate our space in the middle of uh, development or yeah, transformation situation. Yeah, even we made kind of, we mimicry the institution. In, in the left side, you can see this is the official logo for the Indonesian National 
land uh, department uh, and then we mimicry them but then add another wings and but uh, and we imagine we had also kind of authority because uh, the the government version they only uh, talk about the administrative thing regarding land ownership like the public certificate and etc but then uh, what we make is more talking about the uh, cultural value about the relation between people with their land like <clears throat> a cultural landscape and uh, how we negotiate the space etc one of the project is this is uh, how we negotiate our space when we inviting for the ASEAN Art Biennale uh, in Taiwan because now a lot of investors come from Taiwan so we we say to the museum because the museum is like the one who invite us oh we want to meet the investor from Taiwan and we <clears throat> we will offering them our investment package and we offering the supernatural farming investment package and there is some delegation from uh, yeah our village doing presenting with the investor and people in our neighborhood watching streaming uh, from the village and yeah for us is important because then the local newspaper uh, make a headline uh, that we are negotiating we meet uh, directly with the we are negotiating directly with the investor because as you know like in the context of investment we, we we always never know who own the factory or who is the investor investor is like a mysterious guy so we only know that we working there in in their factory and <clears throat> and now uh, since two years, what we do is going into more strategic, strategic uh, ways. Uh, since we we imagine Jatiwangi as a terracotta area, or we call it kota terracotta, and this picture is like our zero point ritual. As you know, like every city or every area have a zero point, and then we make a ritual. Uh, to put the zero point, we made like a kind of the terracotta egg, and because in our uh, local uh, tradition, we believe that if if you interest in if you interest uh, in some land, you should uh, bury the the duck egg. Then uh, we believe that. The land will be belongs to you, and yeah, we 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 <clears throat> we buried the terracotta egg in here. This in in the in this land is actually this land is like the the land that before it's a sugar factory. So we we decide to put the zero point of terracotta city or terracotta area in the sugar factory, uh, ex sugar factory. And yeah, since 2019, the Terracotta City is kind of the our long-term aspiration to yeah to how to say like <clears throat> kind of the our strategy to to imagine Jatiwangi as a place that we are interesting or we are. We we want to live in it, not only not yeah not only uh, asrah to not only like uh, yeah. yeah actually we are already lose since beginning in for this development situation but at least we can lose in the cool way so that's why we make the terracotta city project and we invite uh, at that time. Actually, Jatiwangi choosing as a curator for the biggest ceramic biennial in Indonesia, like Indonesian ceramic biennial, and then but then 
uh, we decide to move. Usually this event, this biennial is happen in Jakarta, but then because we are choosing as a creator, so we move this biennial to Jatiwangi. And then we invite the governor, the West Java governor as one of the participants. And then, but then we offering him to, you must sign this. Uh, we made a kind of the, the placard, uh, terracotta placard. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, terracotta plate. And then this is the kind of the officiated that the terracotta area also, uh, the governor signed it that. Jatiwangi should become the Terracotta area. Yeah, and I think, I don't know uh, how many minutes that I have. Maybe I can share a little bit about the Terracotta area. Five to ten minutes. Or ten Sorry? Minutes. Ten minutes, okay. So Five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes. Uh, wait. <clears throat> Maybe I can share to. Uh, hopefully, you can see this. Yeah. You, you, you see this picture, like why terracotta, what terracotta, or. Not yet. Not yet. Wait. Maybe I stop sharing first, then I share again. One and yeah. now you see, or yes, yeah. So, <clears throat> after let's say, like, uh, we agree to projecting Jatiwangi as a terracotta city, what should we do? Then, the first thing that we uh, think is like, we should discuss what is terracotta, why, and etc. And again, we always inviting our friend to kind of the uh teman ngobrol is kind of the yeah, friend who discuss together and then but then yeah we we create a program call it uh sacred landscape which is inviting artists from uh, southeast asia and also two artists from jakarta to talking together about this and Yeah, and this is one of the process we discuss. And yeah, this is the <clears throat> the data of the master plan of uh, Majalengka or Jatiwangi. And yeah, like I said, actually, in the context of uh, planning the area, I think one of or development, one of the important thing is like how we can communicate this uh, to every stakeholder, especially with the local government. Yeah, that's why we we invite artists or our friend to to formulate uh, to create a form that we can uh, discuss the idea of terracotta. <clears throat> In this picture, like this is the this is the discussion with the Majalengka special planning department. And then we invite also like our neighborhood, like farmer, farmer the, the roof tire worker, and also the, our friend who working in the modern factory, like in the Nike factory, et cetera, to, to discuss together about the terracotta city uh, and then yeah to gain also what what is the terracotta city for for them meaning or do we need etc kind of what we imagine about the ideal places that we are living in or the future of jatiwangi and yeah actually this is the the pd this is the pdf of the catalog of the our indonesian ceramic biennial Maybe I can share after if you want also the link. Yeah, this is our West Java governor. After we 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 discuss what is terracotta, why is terracotta, etc. Then we made kind of exhibition, and we invite the governor. We invite every department 
to to see what we let's say our research our our first research about the terracotta city and then we make of we make kind of the uh yeah, this is our police chief district and we made kind of the this is when the governor suddenly should sign the terracotta city uh, idea yeah we made kind of seminar to co actually the seminar have a goal to consolidate the idea of terracotta city through its department in the local uh, government of majalengka like this is the the head of the planning department and during this seminar the governor say that okay jatiwangi should become a terracotta area terracotta yeah terracotta area and for us it's important because if we negotiate directly to the local government sometimes it's hard but then through the uh, more highest level of govern government it's clear or it's it's yeah it's more easy and suddenly the local government will be say yes when the when when the governor say that Setuangi should become the local uh, should become the terracotta area and this is one of the building that already built part as part of the terracotta area is in the tourism center and this is uh, our city hall as well uh, changings into the terracotta <clears throat> uh base material and this this style is producing by our uh, neighborhood he made the new product yeah because in this vinyl the idea of this vinyl is uh, as part of the terracotta city idea is like make new product from our clay or from our soil beside roof tile and uh brick to to build our own city or our own area it's like a subsistence uh, mechanism or economy producing but the producing for using and using for uh, our own needs and and <clears throat> one of the concrete uh, goals from this uh, biennial or this yeah, project is like you see like in the map there is a number this number is like the area that uh, projecting in the master plan, like for example, the number one is like the Aero City, which is the area is around the international airport, will be projecting as the new uh, new city to supporting the airport. And then there is another area like like the tourism area, but then it's appear a new one like number seven uh, through this uh, vinyl. Uh, and it's mentioned as the uh, kawasan terakota jatiwangi or uh, yeah Terra, jatiwangi terakota area like the i the idea of terakota city now is already officiated as already put officially in the master plan of <coughs> uh, majalengka city so now we have opportunity also to to discuss more detail about what we imagine about the terracotta area for example in the more detailed planning for example every building in jatiwangi 30 percent should become should using the terracotta that produced by a local or every pedestrian it should using the terracotta etc it's kind of the our way or our strategy to strengthen again the local uh, economy and through this yeah and in this this is we built also the museum as the first terracotta uh, building in the context of terracotta city and this is the our vice mayor who inaugurate this, this is the process when we build together with the architect student and then with with the uh, our neighborhood we, uh, yeah in the music we using several technique of uh, uh, earth like with ram earth with the etc and yeah you can see the museum is uh, not too big but then i have a function as a public space as well and yeah through this panel we invite ceramic artists to do residency and creating new product like you saw like this is the new tile and then yeah the process 
this is the tableware from some artists and every artist uh, we imagine that uh, uh, to make the terracotta embassy in Jatiwangi like every artist who represent for example from the Korea from the uh, Switzerland there is our friend from the Switzerland Sandra and then we imagine them to uh, make a terracotta embassy so we can have a uh, uh, future collaboration after this by now yeah and yeah i think and i still have time or but at least we can discuss more about that i think but uh yeah maybe to stimulate the discussion for me it's interesting to see the intersection between uh, artistic practice with the real life context and then especially in the context of development how we how we how we read this kind of practice uh yeah as we know like artistic uh, or like the notion of aesthetic is uh, also i think we can stretching as a subjectivity tools uh, in our real life uh, context and yeah and also another question uh, uh, can we also formulating this kind of approach like the artistic approach as a new development model because as we know like development always contain or have a tendency uh, uh as a hierarchy like de developing country like uh, try to develop the develop the developed country try to improving the developing country and also always have a tendency like in the, the idea of progression and yeah and yeah i think we can discuss uh, a lot after that so yeah i think Thank you. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then I will pass on the bird to our first discussant, which is Dominic Lemley. Um, she is an artist and philosopher and a professor of drawing and painting at the Zurich University of the Arts and also responsible for the Terracotta University seminar and the talk series. Okay, thank you, Pascal. Hello, everyone. You've seen we wear these beautiful gadgets. We are sitting here, a group of us, together in a room at the Zurich University of the Arts and uh, we have to wear the masks at the moment. So I'm one of the two discussants. After me, it will be Reinhard. I try to keep it uh, short, just about five minutes. And the role of the discussant is to synthesize some of what you've been sharing with us, uh, Ismail, and to bring forth some aspects to help the discussion go rolling. First of all, Isma, I think it was an excellent. <coughs> Thank you very much. It's the first one, the first one in a series of talks. I think you did, did really an excellent job in showing us the dynamics, how the Chatiwan, the Art Factory Collective Initiative, how it's interlinking with its locality. And I think I would like to focus um, now. I noted down like four points to so the dynamic of local global and art as a tool. And I think it's also very important what you said that togetherness is what you aim at and not confrontation. And that your objective, like your goal of all the initiatives is that you are actively creating a place where uh, you want to live in. So I think um, first, maybe the local global dynamic. I think um, often, especially in the art world, 
it gets forgotten that we are living in a globalized world and everything is always taking place in localities. So I very much like the term that is, has been introduced in sociology, global, G-L-O-C-A-L. -L. So combining global and local. And I think it's more that what you have shown in a very interesting way throughout your presentation is how global dynamics, how they interact with uh, contexts in particular <laughs> locations. So I think that's really interesting. And that what you are doing, and you showed that with all these various uh, projects that you are using art as a tool to react to this local global dynamics and actively as artists and wearing a lot of different hats from other disciplinary uh, practitioner points of view, try to actively change and bring for the, bring, bring about an, an environment that you feel is worthwhile in living in. And I think there, um, you also pointed this out several times is uh, what I find highly amazing is that Chattivami Art Factory, now I come to this togetherness and not being confrontational, that you bring together a lot of different groups within the community. So you were mentioning bringing together uh, school children, uh, politicians, the military, policemen, um, or, and all kind of subcultural groups to jointly come together and try to do something. And at the same time, you ground it in the local story, in the story of terracotta. So something that was diminishing, instead of focusing a lot of effort on trying to show how it has been dim diminishing, you are making it big again, but in a new way. So I think this is uh, highly exciting. And I feel like what you've been raising as a question at the end, um, if artistic approach, if it could be uh, a tool or part of uh, development in a specific region, I think that Chakivani Art Factory shows very well how it actually could be done. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's an uh, open secret that I'm really impressed with uh, what Chuck Collective is doing. And I, with uh, this synthesized approach, I try to highlight some of these aspects. So again, I think from the start, thinking about the local global development, using art as a tool to move collectively, like bringing in all people from all walks of life to jointly try to create a place that you feel is uh, good to live in, is worthwhile living in. Uh, so um, I think there are a lot of things that probably will come from everyone with questions later. I think I stop here now. I hand the, over to Pascal again. Yeah, thank you very much, Dominique. Um, then I will hand over the word to our second discussant, which is Reinhard Van Hu. Um, he's lecturer at the Willem de Kooning Academy in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And he's also involved in also space. So Reinhard, are you here? Yes, Pascal. I'm, uh, oh, uh -huh, yeah, I see you. Yeah. I'll pass the word on to you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Ismail, for your uh, for your insight in existing of Jatiwangi and Jatiwangi Art Factory in general. Um, there's many things to uh, know more of, uh, to dive into, and normally I like it to just chit chat and, and ask random questions to have a better understanding of uh, what you are doing. Um, but I will try, well, 
Dominique already said a lot. So I will try to limit myself to three things. Uh, first one is a kind of summarizing if I'm uh, for uh, us all to understand the, the, the timeline actually of Jatibangi in an abstract way, not a, the truth way. Um, to understand maybe the activities of Jav is if I understood well, you talk about the industry in the area of Jatiwangi, Majalenka, and what you kind of say is you have the industry, the sugarcane industry of the colonial area, slowly being followed by the terracotta of the new order. And for uh, us, it's good to understand the new order is a kind of dictator. Uh, regime from uh, 65 till 99 approximately I can be wrong in a few years so that industry uh, going with an intermezzo of exporting domestic labor into other countries like the Middle East I mean that's a, not an artistic one but it, it's an interesting one going to the oh garment God. industry of these days and then maybe you could say uh, terracotta as an anarchist movement to find a new area. But that's my own interpretation. Uh, that's what I, but I think it's nice to understand this period of time. And then uh, if I'm to the terracotta, maybe it's good to explain uh, the multi layeredness of what means terracotta. Uh, terracotta means uh, roofed or can be roof tile, but kota in Indonesia means city. I think that's yeah, an, an, uh, interesting to understand that terracotta is not only one word, but has multiple multiple uh, interpretations. And I was wondering is if actually the terracotta uh, city project is a kind of accumulation of uh, what Jav did till now, uh, like accumulation of understanding how you can influence an area. And at the same time in trying that, if you find yourself in the same trap as where you started, as what you said, community is always trapped at the end of the day. And I was wondering if you felt that you were trapped and then that's maybe the title of your uh, talk that to continue or to end. I think that was the uh, title, yeah. Yeah, that's thing. And then a last one, which is very nice to know, or I would like, I would like to know more and get more insights from, is the different tactics that you try to use, like tactics to oppose the colossal, uh, and you use uh, different tactics, tactics of uh, spiritu spirituality, the tactic of excitement, like to get people excited, uh, and use the supernatural uh, as a tactic to retranslate, and to lure people into uh, working together with. These are the three things I think, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask. And yeah, another one, a last one, which is maybe makes it too long, but uh, it would be nice in this two weeks to understand how from 2005, and you had your birthday last week, still congrats, congratulations with the 10 years, no, 15 years birthday of uh, Chatiwangi Art Factory. But it would be nice to have an insight of how you grow from a family house to being able to involve 11,000 people in the music festival. Uh, these little steps were, should, could also be interesting for us to know with its failures. But I mean, of course, that's why we need to meet much more to have an insight in that but with all its failures and its successes and its in-betweennesses. I think I leave it up to there. Thank you very much, Reinhard. Um, so now we transition to the open discussion and we've got almost um, 60 minutes time for that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Ismail, do you wanna respond to one or two of the questions of Reinhardt, or um, does anyone else have a spontaneous reaction? Maybe anyone first, if there is some question or respond. Uh, 
Prabhupada, do you've got a question in the chat? Do you want to ask it? Oh, yeah, I just want to ask King to Ismail about the terracotta concept. Uh, yeah, Ismail already tell before, but yeah, maybe I just want to ask King who and what is the content of the terracotta city itself? If the content are citizens, what kind of citizen do you want? Then what if the content are education, health, new economy, product diversification, and other, what will the pattern be like? Like that. Because Jatiwangi citizen is a lot of background, right? Uh, the young people, old people, also the, the newcomer, a lot of people come to Jatiwangi like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think the input from Dominic and Renat is uh, very interesting. <clears throat> Hopefully, we can also uh, bring to uh, elaborate more this discussion. And for what the Prabowo uh, asking, I think that's what we are try to avoid to to make the Terracotta City idea as our idea, like because the question like. What the people do you want? I think this is not kind of the in the in the that kind of tendency because that's the trap of development. Like development is always uh, like yeah, imaging to improving something or someone like, like uh, yeah in, in the logic of uh, intervene. I think uh, this time for the terracotta, hopefully it can be something that uh, we can rise up together like not people that uh, we want, but uh, what we want to our, uh, uh, for the for the place that we are, will be living in until die, maybe like, and uh, maybe it's the question can be also come back to ourselves, like what we are uh, projecting of ourselves <clears throat> to, uh, yeah, as a people who live there and and they are regarding like the health, new economy, like uh, product diversification. It's that's the the number of things that we should discussing discuss further. But in the ways of discuss together as the one who live or as a, as a sub subject of the of the area, not kind of the we formulating something and then uh, deliver. Uh, to the people and then people should, should agree. I think that's also the kind of the, yeah, the trap of the uh, development or maybe sometimes the art practice in the, yeah, yeah people always say like engaging or participatory also, I think for me kind of also trap in this uh, kind, yeah, it trap in this kind of, uh, logic kind of they, they have an idea and then uh, make people participate or yeah like uh, in the mood of uh, improving or changing in <clears throat> uh, yeah and it's it's a very uh, kind of problematic in the uh, ethical context I think and yeah and I want a little bit respond what uh, Reynat about the this is the accumulation of what Jeff do uh, yeah maybe uh, because I mean this accumulation is more like because this now this situation it's really yeah it's our real life uh, context for now like uh, we will yeah because we yeah we uh, we will continue or we just uh, sacrifice uh, sacrifice menyerah uh, surrender surrender to this development and it's it's not a, i mean it's not about the wrong and right like i think because we yeah we already lose i think since the beginning but then 
at least we can uh, still uh, uh, yeah as the one who living here I think we can we are still at least we can, we, we are still have imagination about the place that we are living in and yeah interesting about the community trap that's why I think connecting again to what uh, Prabo asking that's what we try to avoid uh, that's why I think we didn't have until now really fixed idea about what is terracotta but uh, yeah we always try to make kind of the open discussion about this terracotta idea uh, to imagine together what is the uh, what Arif always say like the ideal place for living in and yeah like uh, connecting what Dominic uh, respond like how togetherness as well can be uh, what can be an aspect in the uh, in the de development uh, how we develop or yeah in the development context I think because yeah talking about development is always about like economic growth it's always about the uh, high mass consumption or technological improving, etc. But then another aspect like togetherness, uh, uh, to say like uh, yeah, maybe also spiritual, like uh, because I have kind of the interesting story. Like now in Jatiwangi, there is uh, several factory who had the kesurupan, apa sih, mass. Trans, trans, trans. Yeah, mass trans or yeah, like uh, when some spirit or some ghost come to your body, like you, how do you call it in English? I forgot. Like possessed, possessed. possessed like, yeah, like in the in the modern factory, like in the garment factory, like hundreds of worker, like suddenly get a position, like whoa, and then the owners, like the investor, like wow, oh, what happened here? And then because they are afraid, so they make the factory uh, the, the, the labor or the worker like a holiday for like three days and but but then uh yeah the investor asked the owner asking what happened and then uh, the the imam or the religious or the shaman say that yeah it's because you didn't have make a permission to build this factory so the spirit like angry and then get possessed to your worker so i think this kind of aspect also interesting to talking in the context of uh, yeah development or like uh, yeah like uh, to adding again the ethical burden uh, in the investment or in the uh, development so um, yeah I think for me now and maybe another one will be anyone will be respond again or Um, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure seeing and uh, listening to you and um, I'm very overwhelmed by what you are doing. Um, there are certain things that were striking to me. This was the notion of subjective materiality. Uh, I think we should, we can come back to this. And another moment was to pay, to give dignity to the soil to give dignity to the soil. Um, and the third one was um, that you spoke about rituals. And uh, uh, let me start with the last one, rituals. Um, uh, I'm uh, f f f very much uh, like very much yoga and therefore I know rituals. I'm also no rituals from the church where I'm going to. Uh, how do you, um, how you do, how comfortable do, do you feel with the word ritual in the international art context? Which I ask this because uh, I have seen, I've learned that Western art is somehow, somehow against theology. It's somehow against, not against science, but it's independent from theology and science. But with the word ritual, you re-enter this uh, theological, religious, 
uh, behavior into the art context. And I know this also from contemporary poetry, that ritual is very important. But how do you feel with that? How does it work when you work with international, other international artists? Ritual, ritual, yeah. Yeah, uh, very interesting question and very hard question actually. But then I think maybe <clears throat> what I understand like uh, about art, I think art uh, in Indonesia, uh, I mean, not, not art in the context of contemporary art practice, but then how we understood uh, generally art as well also uh, as something that uh, have a dimension, phenomenology dimension, I mean, embedded in our daily life. That's why like in Indonesia is very diverse and uh, very, yeah, have a cultural diverse, like we have a lot, like a thousand island and like so many culture and then every culture have their own, uh, how to say like translation, uh, how to uh, facing their daily life and uh, a lot of ritual in the context of that, uh, and and what we do in here in Jatiwangi, I think we try to also thinking in the in this in the in that uh, ways. I mean, not on not as uh, something that you will be presenting to the art world, but then it's more like something that, uh, uh, yeah, is something that we for hopefully also yeah, have a function for our daily life. For example, when we do supernatural farming, I think it's uh, because farming now in here is uh, it's already become like uh, economical activity, like you planting and then it's for selling. You, after that, you're selling the rice, but then uh, ritual can be kind of the a bridging to make a connection again with uh, what we plan and then yeah what we grow etc not not always uh, in the uh, paradigma of uh, a commodity etc I think that's what we understood about the ritual I think in, as well like uh, when we do with the terracotta, <clears throat> with our soil, when we inviting the, yeah, to at least there is after every three years there is a moment that uh, we are together sitting and praying our uh, soil that we are living in, uh, and then maybe we will be uh, most of us will be buried in that soil, so not only. Uh, see this soil as uh, totally as a commodity or economical uh, things. I think that's what we understood about the ritual. I don't know if that makes sense or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes. Sorry, I don't want if I'm uh, too insisting. How much do you work together with the Islamic religion? How important is this connection with mm. Islam? You talk, you invited the Imam to the rituals. Um, the groups from the mosque are singing. Do you work also with Christians or with Hindus? Um, how is it? How can I imagine that? Would you say also that the connection to religion is very important? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, for us, it's not uh, not really connect, not in the means of the connecting with the religion, but then it's more like connecting with uh, yeah, with our neighborhood, with what uh, usually our neighborhood do, which is majority is the Muslim uh and yeah they have yeah we have kind of the routine activity uh we just expanded the activity uh for example yeah the religious activity 
uh, and connecting with the yeah, yeah another activity like who have a social dimension like in the farming so uh, religious activity not only uh, as the yes yeah, uh, some only the the business between you and the god but then also about the how you make a relation with your uh, neighborhood and yeah uh, we have a church here uh, like christian community but very small and also the uh, confucian we, we had kind of the temple hill uh, yeah and but yeah uh, not in the mood of like making project with them but then just like yeah we several times visiting like the temple and uh, yeah inviting or kind of uh, make a screening with them just this just, just as uh, we imagine this as a uh, how we live together in the uh, places called Jatiwangi Are there any reactions, comments, or questions? Um, what can be understood by ringing the soil? Ringing the soil? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, ringing the soil is actually literally uh, we ringing like we hit the roof tile and make kind of the. Uh, orchestration together we are like ringing together like usually we we had a preparation like three months before the the event or the yeah what i call like uh, our tradition uh so <clears throat> we we make kind of the one song or yeah three song and then we come to every play every school every village and uh have a workshop together to how to ringing the roof tile uh, with one yeah with uh, three songs and after that <clears throat> we gathering together in one place in the uh, the place that before it's become the sugar factory during the colonial times and we always had in that place and then we are ringing the roof tile literally ringing together like uh, with some, yeah, the last time we do is like three songs uh, we, that we uh, create together. And it's what you're questioning or? Yes, that was the question. Is it is it a traditional uh, ritual or is it something that you came up uh, with as a new ritual? That's yeah, this is something that we, uh, yeah, came up with the as a new ritual because yeah, Jatiwangi is even compared to, for example, our next city. Uh, like they have very strong, very strong uh, local tradition <clears throat> or or so-called traditional art or something. Jatiwangi is kind of even we don't have our our local food like. Uh, our local food is like the food from Cirebon, from another city, etc. So, yeah, that, is, that we. But then, uh, for it's kind of the yeah we are. Um, uh, yeah, it's kind of the we are free to creating new one, <laughs> because sometimes the the debate is always like, you try to change the traditional thing something kind of that because we don't have the traditional thing so we have we made the new new traditional things. <laughs> Uh, I have a question. Um, you mentioned introducing like a new highway as a neighbor and you made a kind of ritual around that. So to use this one as an example, like uh, how does that ha how does that happen? Is that like something that grows naturally organically that people decide that it is important to uh, welcome this new friend? Or is it something that is more organized and initiated and from there spreads out to like the people in the neighborhood? 
So it's actually a kind of question of how do these things uh, organize or spring? Do you understand what is my question? How do I organize the, the ritual or how people see the new highway? No, it's not like uh, a question of the highway per se, but it's more a question of uh, how you organize. So if this idea, for instance, the highway happens because multiple people are talking about the idea, okay, the highway is happening, what are we going to do to welcome the highway? Or is it more something that you maybe as a organization think like, okay, so how can we deal with these factors that are happening around us? So the question is more, does it happen within the community that everybody thinks about this and then a ritual is formed? Or is it more that you introduce a ritual uh, to create with the community? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, first, I think all the wave of the, uh, let's say, new development is actually most of the people, like uh, like I said, it's like they are kind of the celebrating, <clears throat> uh, for example, the new factory, because now they have a time to, uh, let's say, walking there with the very clean uh, clothes and then with the motorcycle, etc. <clears throat> and this highway also, like, because, yeah, I think also maybe because the development paradigm of the modern, as you, as you know, development is always uh, uh, linear with the modernism or image of modernity, like highway is one of the image of the modernity. So. Uh, somehow, in one hand, yeah, we kind of the celebrating, like, but then also uh, after that we see also the problem because now, the, yeah, because then the, some of rice field uh, didn't have so much water because of the highway, but the, but mostly it's, we we yeah we didn't, didn't see this as a very problematic things, and but then this this ritual have a position like. Uh, yeah, like, like when the the new neighborhood comes, I think uh, we we should uh, how do you say like know each other. I think it's, it's more like that because in here, that uh, yeah in that person Jatiwangi, when you move to your new house, you must inviting your neighborhood come to your house and then uh, you serve the food and then. Uh, praying together, something kind of that. So we just, uh, like, yeah, we just kind of uh, not mimicry. We just like uh, do in that way, like to see this new highway uh, as the new neighborhood that uh, maybe can be something that will be have a problem or or maybe not. But but then. Yeah, but then not in the uh, mood of the uh, uh, confrontate of that, I think. Did I answer or did I? Does it make sense for you or maybe you have some, yeah, it, some response? It makes, it makes sense and I think I understand what you mean. I think I'm also kind of referring to the idea that uh, a lot of times what you see when things are like in sort of collaboration with the neighborhood is that more that things are kind of, I wouldn't say forced, but happen from above and then spread down in the neighborhood and then stuff happens. So I was just curious to see if this was in this way happening or if it was on a different uh, different way but as I understand if I understand correctly actually because it is already inviting the uh, neighbors in so if you move it's already something that is in the culture so it's probably a very natural way of thinking okay so I will also invite the idea of the of the highway so I think it kind of answered my question I hope you also understand what I mean I'm not sure if I explain it well <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think what we are always uh, like feeling a quote when we, we, yeah, when I mean, in this kind of uh, 
population is like we participating our neighborhood is we always had I have a quote because or we we are working for community because uh, for us the com we are the community itself or uh, yeah uh, that's why I think neighborhood is kind of the word that uh, for me especially is uh, yeah because uh, it's, yeah when you do something with neighborhood it's also same that when you your neighborhood invite you to to do something with them or we do together as the one who live in the one village for example like cleaning the solo canto cleaning the the uh, yeah the our grave our our grave our yard or our cleaning our uh, village hall or etc something that we do together not like uh, we are working uh, to the community or with community or we are participating community i think because participate participating is for me is kind of have the word that contain a distance like and sometimes kind of the have a hierarchy you have an idea and then you participate someone to part of your idea or something but yeah hopefully uh, i mean in here we try to as far as possible, put ourselves as the one who live in, in here in Jatiwangi and then try to, uh, let's say, yeah, uh, survive in this uh, transformation situation. Oscar, the news, I think, is... Yeah, it's, yeah I'm very enthusiastic what you say. It's, it's, it's great um, to, to think of the highway as a, as a neighbor. Um, thing. I think it's... Uh, we would call it this metaphorical, and, but uh, I, I believe you, it's overwhelming. Do you have... Are you afraid of the future? Of the future? in the sense that somebody says, okay, now we build a power plant next to your factory and nuclear plant. And how would you then do it? It's, a, it's an unpolite question, which I'm posing to you, it's unpolite, but you have set me on this thought of thinking, how can I, how can I say, okay, I have a power plant now and it's my neighbor and um, yeah. I know that one artist has, wants to buy a power plant but it is an artist I do not like so much. It's Ansel and Kiefer. But um, would you like to join me in this thinking, having a power plant as a neighbor and not nuclear plant? Power plant is... Uh, atomic yeah. reactor, atomic oh, yeah. reactor. Oh. Very dangerous, very, very uh, unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think... I don't know, maybe in your context, it will be, uh, I mean, you, in your context, I don't know, maybe, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you, you're already in the emergency situation. I mean, if, but for us in our context, like when the highway comes, when the new factory comes, it's hard to, to stimulate the emergency situation because people see this as the opportunity. Yeah, for example, like, one of our Jeff member as well, like uh, several Jeff member working in the Nike factory. If we say that, oh, you will be the skilling if you're working there, like it's very dangerous. We will be kind of the fighting or we, we will be kind of fighting with our friend or with our neighborhood. So yeah, and I think what Jeff do is, I was uh, trying that way is like, uh, not accommodate, but more like, yeah, because uh, flexible and dynamic uh, depends on the, uh, what we are uh, and managing the interest I think because for example like uh, sometimes people see that Jeff kind of the uh, anti-white cube in the context of contemporary art but I think for us is not like that because uh, the gallery uh, presentation or like kind of white cube uh, mode of presentation is for us it's more easy to to talk with the government when we have 
in the format of exhibition because yeah what government imagine like is always yeah that's why when we do uh, when we present our uh, first research about the terracotta city we we do in the exhibition format because it's more easier to talk with the government in this way uh, rather than for example uh, 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 yeah in the event base or yeah so it, uh, if I can add another question, but just to understand well that you use the white cube as a as a tool to connect to institutional bodies that you normally don't have uh, access to. Yeah, 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 and yeah, because the government is always uh, happy to inaugurate something like. <laughs> <laughs> come and then cutting the spita, yeah, cutting some, uh, and then integrate and then make a speech. I think it's, I think it's more like giving a stage for them to talk uh, what we are thinking. I think it's more like that uh, in the right kid. Yeah, and it's nice to oppose or not oppose, but in contrary, how we use the white cube here is to show results of collaborations that are finished, but you use the white space to to be able to talk to institutional bodies and then be able to make the work somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also for the student, for example, like a lot of high school here always send the, their student like to visiting the exhibition space and then they know there is a Jatiwangi art factory like this in art. So it's more easy for them to understand to yeah yeah to communicate with, with them. Yeah, please move. No, it's again what Reinhard says. I just want I'm, I'm very fascinated. It's turning it upside down uh, with the thinking that we have, or I have at least. Reinhard said it's very nice. We use the white cube as a finishing line where you arrive at somehow our career building is somehow towards this or we can say the white cube is an entry point to a system which then processes yourself and here we have a model where the white cube is a means to do other things do i understand you right reinhardt do you agree with me in this let's say twist in this twist uh, of, uh, let's say, our understanding of the art system and Ismail's and Jativangi, Jativangi's understanding of the art system. This is very productive. Thank you so much. Yes, please, Tamu. Uh, you, you mentioned our, so who is we? I think this is always interesting. I think in this global disposition that we are, we I think we sort of have interest groups. And the interest groups, they are interregional. So you can choose, you can, um, what's your goal? Do you want art by its own end? And also the, the career, I think it's very interesting how I have been observing that Shativani Art Factory is playing or playing different strings because i mean you showed ismail the example of uh, where you were part at the asia biennial organizing um, a performative meeting with investors it's i read uh, some texts about it where it has been discussed in this white cute spirit that artists have done this performative, um, how was the term they use, or oh, this performance, and there it ended. But if I understood correct, it's my, what you've been doing is, again, as you, uh, Reinhardt and me, as you've been describing before, you've been using the vinyl space to stage a performative happening but the goal was to actually, in real, attract investors to support a project in your um, region. So 
then my question is maybe it's less you know in both places art is used it's more the goal like where do you head and where do you stop with the same kind of strategies or how would you what would you say isma mm. Yeah, I think uh, in our context, we always have kind of the confusing actually uh, when so much, for example, like uh, to say like uh, highlights from, especially from the contemporary art world about our practice, etc. And yeah, because for example, when we inviting for some biennial or inviting for some residency, when we come back to here, Jatiwangi, and then talk with neighborhood, it's like, something that doesn't cool at all. I mean, so what, yeah, you participate in Bainal, so what? I mean, uh, that's kind of the, uh, how to say like uh, communication that the tension, have a, always have a tension between local and global and then, uh, yeah, like <clears throat> how to, yeah, to, to, to have a melting point uh, in this uh, situation. Yeah, and yeah, when we invite the to the Asian Art Bienal, I think that's that's what we try to yeah, that's we all try like yeah because oh because we have a situation that so many Taiwan investor come to invest in Yatuangi, so why not we we meet them and then make a negotiation directly with the investor. If you want to invest, let's do in our way something kind of that. Uh, yeah, uh, and then yeah, what I will emphasize again, like we have at least like two dimension of communication with the local and then also the uh, global, especially the global art scene. Yeah, and media. Mm -hmm. Are there some more comments or reactions onto that? I assume there are many questions and I'm always bad in asking questions. So I encourage you to ask like badly formulate questions. That's also very good because it's not about a question, but to get your thought out of your head and then see if we can share the bad question or the good question or the good question with the bad formulation or the bad formulation with the no the bad question with the good formulation so please feel free to just share your things that are in your head there was pause i think yes kabubu ah does he have a question Um, Papo, do you've got a question? Uh, I have one, but it is okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, um, Ismail, uh, early is you is early. It was you are mentioned about the supernatural agriculture, right? Uh, is that an example of the new form of welfare? That is an example. In the Terracotta City's concept. Mm, welfare. Mm, I don't know actually. It's. Uh, but but then I think it's interesting also to to thinking about the new concept of uh, welfare or the yeah, or wealth wealth. Uh, yeah, because. Uh, I think we, uh, the world is always regarding uh, to the uh, consumption factor or how we uh, consumption uh, some commodity. And <clears throat> I think, yeah, Terracotta, Kota Terracotta, Terracotta City have, can be also as, uh, see as a platform or as a, open space to talking that or 
make kind of the measuring or kind of, yeah imaging the new uh, index of development for example or yeah, i think we can be uh, ima thinking imaginative as we want <clears throat> i mean yeah like uh, because even the concept of development itself we can also i think formulate again uh, yeah like now so many people also talking about the grow like the negative grow or uh, there is some like people talking about the post development etc i think but at least uh, for now uh, for the capacity we put a position as a subject to uh, imagining our places or as uh, the actor of the development itself which is we also i think we also can imagine the what is the wealth for our context or welfare for our context and maybe after that make uh, the yeah make the our own instrument to measuring that or maybe we didn't need to measure that i think that's the something that we can uh, discuss further of course with you prabowo discuss with you also <laughs> thank you miss thank you thank you i was wondering bo if you have the answer yourself or did you already have a known answer of is that the new welfare because i think you have <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's good. It's... Thank you, Miss Mal. Thank you, Mas Ahad. <laughs> Are there more questions? Please just feel free. <laughs> Bernadette, yeah. So I don't put the audio in. No, no, you can just speak here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I was, uh, it's not really a question, uh, it is more, uh, I'm also wondering about the word development because you were uh, saying it a lot of times and you also um, uh, self-criticized uh, this term. So can you maybe say something again about this? Because of course we have this uh, term in mind when we think about capitalist development, exploitation and so on. So, yeah, and for me, it's also linked to go, it's goal oriented. So that means you have a goal in mind. And what I understood from your proposal is more that you provide, provide a space which can grow in different, in multi directions, multi directional growth, maybe or something, uh, or undirectional growth. But yeah, I would be interested in your. Uh, thinking about this, uh, how would you, yeah, see the term development? Mm. Uh, how I can start? Yeah, I think yeah, what you mentioned about the development, I think that's also uh, what I imagine. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but then I think, as we know, that the uh, the development in the modern term is uh, appears after the World War. I think uh, when there is uh, like the world kind of divided into to like uh, there is a developed country which is win the war, and then there is a, like developing country uh, like the country like uh, which is just already released from the colonization or just uh, uh, have independence. And yeah, at that time, I think the term of development is contained uh, again, like the, something that have a hierarchy, like uh, we, we should say that uh, develop, uh, like one country should develop the country and then this country kind of the projecting what they already uh, had or what to to the country that 
dating so developing following like yeah as a model this developed country as a model for the developing country and and yeah for me it's it's interesting because then uh all the developing country especially for example it's indonesia during the new order era is uh following this uh and then a lot of uh translation as the how to say like uh uh modern stage like yeah like trans translate as a, a something that uh improving or the, under the idea of progress like from the traditional and then you you take off into uh industrial and then you take off into uh another level with, with the technology etc and uh, there is i think there is some senegalese uh development scholar uh name is ndongo he mentioned about the myth of development because uh this the idea of the role model idea from let's say the uh what's so called global north or western country uh uh to to make the developing country following them is kind of the uh, is kind of, of is kind of myth because not only yeah they they encourage the developing country to not only uh, desirable to following this model but also something that will be achievable which is actually doesn't it's, it's for him it's like a myth because when we imagine all the country is uh have uh i think he talked in the context of uh sustainability uh, uh in the context of energy consumption like if we imagine like every country have a consumption with same with the let's say uh the developed country it we our planet is uh not enough to uh yeah our energy capacity of our plant is not enough if we have uh, energy consumption same like a developed country i think i mean yeah uh, what i talk about development in regarding about that <clears throat> and simply like government always trans translation translate as a building infrastructure like uh, this is the real life uh, context what we are happen now like building infrastructure inviting a lot of investment and then uh, and then we, we, we will have a lot of employment I think this kind of the logic which is uh, yeah, a lot of trap in there I, think. I don't know is that makes sense or not I, I think you I, uh, I'm sorry maybe I was not clear but I, I didn't want to speak about development in country, I would talk about global south and north as usual. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to um, point at the term development within yeah, your yeah, project. Yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I mentioned, I think development in uh, context of the dwelling or what we are, what I'm talking is like, yeah, like, uh, uh, how to say, like, yeah, when the wave of investment come here and then uh, and when we imagine the area is only uh, from the top top down like the state like imagining this area should become industrial area for example in the context of Jatiwangi but then uh, without uh, discuss with uh, us who living here all right, and I think it's happened as well in every places in, uh, yeah, in in, yeah, in, in so many places in Indonesia or in Southeast Asia or in and other places as well. <clears throat> yeah, when you, yeah, when you, yeah, I think when you projecting some area, it's only. Uh, from 
one side or top down that's what we uh, and the yeah, development is our context again like uh, concretely like a lot of new infrastructure come here like new airport new highways new factory yeah I think. <laughs> So oh, I think we still got time for one last comment or question. <clears throat> Does someone want to add something? Okay. okay I may. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not maybe for this, um, it's not a question, but more opening the terrain again. You've been addressing it before, it's the participation. Um, and you've already mentioned that the way you look at participation is more togetherness and doing something together. has been addressed now throughout the talk in many ways. So instead of something being ordered, someone goes into a community and uh, sees how many can participate, that you are um, addressing it in a different way, that it's more about doing things together. So how do you make this happen? How, or can you give an example of how mm -hmm. do you um, get people interested in doing something together with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, to, yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, in our context, together is kind of the nature of uh, what we are living in. For example, when we uh, doing something together with the policemen or with the army, it's because uh, I think, for example, in the village level, it always we we always had a, a police there. I mean, and also the army. Uh, I mean, it's part of our, let's say, ecosystem. So uh, togetherness or yeah, working uh, with others or to working together is not something that, uh, how to say, like something that formulating as a, how to say, like as a, a method or as a, as part of the project itself, I mean, it's because we are, yeah, we our context, our nature here is like we are living together, so it's very easy to, to connecting uh, with uh, everyone, yeah, with uh, <coughs> let's say every stakeholder here or every parties here, formal informal institution, like we just like uh, connecting, not. <clears throat> not something that we are formulating, then asking them to participate, I think, but not in the mood like that. For example, like the 11,000, when you do 11,000, I think uh, how it can be 11,000, maybe because people also found their interest there. For example, like uh, there is some school who send, let's say, uh, two two thousand students because when uh, we when they do from the previous uh, ringing tradition, ringing soil uh, orchestra, they they after that they have uh, more students uh, apply to their school. I think uh, this kind of uh, things that we uh, try to, uh, how to say, like, not offering, but yeah, <clears throat> we work in that way. I mean, uh, and <clears throat> police also very excited uh, to to join because uh, an army because also they all, they they also want to change their image as institution who. How to say like to have a close or humble with the with the community, uh, so they have also their own interests. <clears throat> yeah, they, and 
then and the gangster as well they also want to change their image and this kind of uh, situation that uh, it, together that we yeah understood about working together because we had this nature i don't know maybe in the european context it will be different or yeah it will be different i think Thank you very much. Um, are there some last reactions, comments? Well, otherwise, thank you very much, Ismail, for your talk. And thank you very much, Dominic and Reinhardt, for your input as discussants. Um, shall we give Ismail um, another applause? And of course, thank you all very much for participating, everyone in the Netherlands, here in Zurich and in Katibang. Ten love. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>